Assalamu alaikum alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. We read in Sahih Bukhari, in one of the uh, most authentic collections of hadith of the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that he told Uqba ibn Amr that among the things which the people have learned from previous revelations, if you are not ashamed, then do whatever you will. Uh, this hadith is uh, important because it's dealing with a concept which is misunderstood today, which is a concept of feeling shame, feeling uh, shy or bashful. Very often it's thought that people who feel shame uh, aren't truly manly or truly adult. But that's something, for example, for children or for weak people. But the Prophet ﷺ instructed us that shame is part of iman, as he said in uh, another hadith. Al Haya min al Iman. And in another hadith, a man criticized somebody. He said, That person is bashful. That person is very shy. And the Prophet said, No, uh, feeling shame, feeling bashful is part of Iman, part of faith. So Islam encourages us, cr- encourages us to know this concept of shame and to uh, judge ourselves by it, to judge all of our actions by this uh, hadith. Uh, the Arabs, the people who are being referred to in this hadith, were the Arabs before Islam. The Arabs had never had prophets and messengers sent to them. Uh, and so they did not inherit from the previous revelations, from the previous uh, revelations of Allah SWT to the various prophets, very much knowledge. The prophets were steeped in ignorance, uh, I mean, pardon me, the uh, Arabs were steeped in ignorance uh, and living without very much guidance. But they did have uh, certain uh, parables and sayings which they inherited from previous religions, from the Christians and Jews, from the prophets Jesus and Moses, uh, and something going back all the way to the prophet Abraham, as well as the sayings sometimes of wise and learned men amongst them. One of the sayings which they had was, if you feel no shame then do whatever you will. And this is a very comprehensive uh, uh, saying, which is an example of the concise wisdom which we inherit from the prophets, from the literature of the prophets uh, of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This hadith can be understood in several different ways, all of which are, of course, equally correct, and all part of the concise meaning linguistically uh, of the Arabic sentence. Uh, First of all, it can be understood as simply a statement. Uh, one who lacks shame, one who lacks this quality of being shy or bashful or feeling shame, will do as he pleases. So people who lack this feeling of shame will be oblivious to what is right and what is wrong. They, oh, they, they, they're not afraid of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they're not afraid of what people think of them either. So those are people from whom you should never expect any good deeds, people who feel no shame or shyness. It can also be understood as a sort of uh, license or permission. And this is according to the Islamic standards. If you are ashamed, then you know that what you're doing is not correct. And if you do not feel ashamed, then that's an indication that what you do is correct. That is, if you have the Islamic guidelines, if you seek knowledge from the Qur'an and Sunnah as to right and wrong, if you keep in your heart all the time Allah's guidance to you, then you're going to feel embarrassed or ashamed that people would see you doing what is wrong. Or you will feel embarrassed or ashamed in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for breaking His commandments. And so if you feel this feeling, then you know there's something wrong with the actions which you're doing. And if you do not feel that feeling then, inshallah, uh, the actions which you are doing are acceptable. It's also understood uh, that this hadith is a warning to people. if you feel no shame, then do anything you please. Do whatever you will. This is not permission. This is not permission from Allah that if you're a person who has no shame, a person who's never embarrassed, that you are allowed to do whatever you want. But it means that if you don't feel ashamed of what you're doing, uh, then you're going to do all those things anyway. But you're going to pay the price. You're going to be judged from whatever you do. Uh, in, in this life, criminals, people who break the law, who... Are not, uh, are not embarrassed, they're not ashamed of that fact, sooner or later, the law is going to catch up with them and they're going to be punished. And that's true, of course, even more so 
that everything we do is going to be uh, recorded uh, by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we're going to be judged for those actions. So, if you don't feel ashamed in front of your Creator to worship other beings, if you don't feel ashamed that Allah who created you uh, did not tell you to worship these pictures and statues, for example, uh, and you know this picture or statue uh, could never hurt you or harm you or, or do any benefit for you, if you know that this being whom you are worshipping did not create you or make you, is not the all-powerful, all-perfect uh, Lord of this universe, if you feel no shame of bowing down and worshipping that thing or this person uh, in front of your Creator, then go ahead and do it. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is recording what you're doing and you will pay the price for that. If you feel no shame in, in disparaging uh, and ridiculing Allah's commandments and uh, Islamic uh, laws and behaviors. Uh, if you don't feel ashamed in front of Allah for that, then there's no reason to feel ashamed, ashamed in front of people either. Because people today, perhaps Muslims, can never, can never enforce Islam upon you, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Day of Judgment certainly will. So, there are three comprehensive meanings for this hadith. As I said, it's a statement and it's also permission in the case of the person who's judging by Islamic standards, using his or her conscience as a guide. And it's also uh, a warning to those people who do not feel this uh, shame in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, that go ahead and do what you think uh, you're going to get away with because you're not going to get away with it eventually. This shows us that if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala desires to punish any one of us, uh, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to condemn somebody to hell, that the way of condemning that person or punishing them is to remove the feeling of shame. Therefore, it is not a, a masculine trait to be a bold person who has no shame. It is not a, a, a sign of being an adult or being an independent, bold person. Uh, it is not childish to feel shy or, or bashful. But all that feeling is a feeling given us to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because it's a feeling which we can use as a guide for our behavior. And that's why uh, Allah defined shame or bashfulness as part of faith, part of iman. Because without this feeling, we will easily go astray. Uh, so part of it is, is feeling afraid of, of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, of course. Another part of it is feeling afraid in front of people. Because sometimes it's easy for us to forget uh, Allah's presence. Unfortunately, even though we have in Islam so many ways of reminding ourselves, daily prayers, daily purifications, uh, periodic worship such as fasting, many ways of reminding ourselves of Allah's presence, yet it is still easy to forget. But all of us live among people. All of us live among human beings. So we can keep in mind that uh, people are watching us. People who respect us or admire us or people whom we respect or admire. And therefore, we need to be a good example for them in our behavior. We don't want to seem that we are people who leave, uh, live a double life, for example. A double life is a sign of illness or sickness. Uh, a person who at, at one time behaves in one way and another time behaves in the opposite way. A person who frequently uh, behaves as if he or she lives in two separate worlds or two sets of standards or two types of behavior, that person is seen as being a mentally ill person or not a stable person. So what, uh, Islamically, if I talk about Islam, if I pray and I do other things publicly so that people see my Islamic behavior, uh, and then I go out and contradict myself, that's a sign that I'm an unstable person. And of course, no, none of us want that. I, I would feel ashamed if I were to be seen by people doing things which are contradicting my religion. And therefore, I should cultivate in myself this feeling that I'm being observed. Yes, I'm being observed by people, but of course, even if there are no people present, I'm being observed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How can we get this feeling inside of ourselves? If it's a good quality, and we find it lacking, and we know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if He took shame out of our hearts, that that would be a way of condemning us, how can we bring it back? Think always of Allah's attributes. Think always of life and death. 
that we have a short life. Uh, think of Allah's justice that demands that uh, any sin, great or small, be uh, punished. Think all the time and tremble before Allah's perfection, that He is always watching us and observing us. Uh, consider the blessings which Allah has given us and feel and cultivate a feeling all the time of praise and thanksgiving of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for all of the wonderful life, uh, everything which we have been given in this world. Cultivating this feeling will help us to feel ashamed when we do slip up and make mistakes or even think of sinful behaviors. And if we feel ashamed before we do those behaviors, uh, we can pray to Allah to give us the strength to resist temptation because Satan is always bringing new things to tempt us at all times. So cultivate the feeling of shame for doing actions, shame before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, shame that we would uh, disrespect Allah by doing these behaviors, and shame in front of people who will see us as living a contradictory life, contradicting our words with our actions, or contradicting our Islamic public rituals such as prayer by private misdeeds or by uh, a bad behavior towards others, lying, cheating, stealing, uh, acting in foolish uh, ways, and ways that all Muslims know are not proper. And so if we cultivate this feeling of shame and ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to always guide us, uh, He will create that feeling within our hearts at the appropriate moments so that we can consult our conscience and be guided properly uh, to the way which Allah uh, approves, inshallah. So this wisdom, which was inherited by the people before Islam, from prophets of previous religions, is still one of the universal principles of the Islamic faith for all times and all places. So don't be guided by what the popular misconception is of behavior. But always be guided by the prophetic uh, uh, standard which has been set for us. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu.